Is that one I really? Is that that pirate ship bump like that? There's a lot to talk about today. <laughs> um, you know, every now and then I will bust in here and talk about hyperthyroidism with you guys, Graves disease. Um, it's been a while. It's been a year, over a, a year since I last did a video. I don't know why I wait so long to do these videos with you guys. And I think it's more because I honestly don't want to be known for hyperthyroidism, even though I know it's part of my journey in life that God has given me. But <laughs> thank God for him because his grace is sufficient. Um, where I am weak, he is made strong. And so in my infirmities, I will glory in them. And I can give him glory because he has carried me for how many years now? Almost, <laughs> I don't know, quite a while. Ma'am, he has carried you your entire life. Let's acknowledge that and remember that. He formed you in your mother's womb. Don't forget it. Um, but let's talk about hyperthyroidism, grave disease. Now, maybe we can talk about the difference too because some people say that it's a difference, but when I went to one doctor, they diagnosed me with hyperthyroidism. I went to another doctor and they diagnosed me with Graves' disease. So what is the difference? Is there actually a difference? Okay, so the difference is that apparently Graves' disease can cause hyperthyroidism, but hyperthyroidism doesn't cause Graves' disease. So what happens is with Graves' disease, um, your hormones are out of whack. It took me forever to even learn that. I didn't even understand it. And I think that's why it's so important for me to move my body, work out and all that kind of stuff because that really balances my hormones, my endorphins, it releases and it just balances everything for me. Oh, and Graves' disease usually causes the eyes to bulge. Now, there was a time when my eyes were uh, awful. I should insert some pictures so that you guys can see, but they were bulging. They were so itchy, they would hurt. If any type of dust or anything would get into my eyes, it was awful. One eye was bigger than the other, one was like leaned and one was huge. I'll insert some pictures so that you guys can see. Um, would I say that medication healed that? Absolutely not. Um, like you guys know, I've tried to take the medication, that's basically what this video is about, in prior years, and it's not what helped me. It's actually just living a balanced life in God. Literally, that's what helps. So, boom. <laughs> I will add that Graves' disease is an autoimmune thyroid disorder. It's almost as if like the thyroid tries to attack the body. I didn't realize how much, because I, thyroid, I think this is the kind of stuff like when we go to school, this should be taught in school, like the body parts and what affects what and hormones. This is the kind of stuff, you guys, I'm going on a rant right now, but I think that this is the kind of stuff that should be caught, taught in school so that um, we know our bodies. We learn so much unnecessary things that have nothing to do with life or life principles or life just living period. But if we knew the different parts of our bodies and how they affect the different parts, like one thing, it's like a chain reaction. And who would have known right, the autoimmune disorder? You guys can do the research on it, but I wish that this was the kind of stuff that was taught in school. So, you know, we moved to Turkey and we, I've talked about that quite a bit on this channel, not really, but like I've shared um, views from Turkey um, on our journey here. Now, before we moved here, it was such a shock. <laughs> It was such a surprise. I was like, is this gonna affect me? Is this gonna reactivate um, hyperthyroidism in, in me? Um, I was doing so well, and I think I am still doing well. Uh, but when we moved, and but right before we moved, I was noticing my body was acting up. And I think that's one of the most, the main things is to be in tune. Be in tune with your body, uh, to how your body reacts and how it responds, especially to stress. Because for me personally, hyperthyroidism was brought on by stress. I believe 100% that it was purely stress. And I think um, it's a way for me to regulate and calm down, sit down somewhere, Faith, and rest. 
if God rested, we are surely supposed to rest. Uh, that is something that I truly believe we are supposed to do. So um, if you feel like you're stressed about something, <laughs> I would I would say rest. We need to take breaks, you guys. And um, for me personally, before we left, uh, we put the house on the market and I was fine. But I think the closer we got to the date, October of 2022, um, my body started acting funny and I think it was unconscious. I was trying to be aware because I knew that this was such a huge change. I was just trying to make sure that my body was in check, but I did stop working out. And I will say, and I'll <laughs> stress this over and over for me personally, movement and um, mobility, keeping this body moving is huge for me. My hormones, endorphins, Whatever the case may be, I am a person that has to continually, um, if I'm not resting, if I, you know, then I need to have some type of movement, whether it be a hit workout, a nice long stroll outdoors, um, <laughs> some weights, uh, all kinds of things. I just need to be moving. My body needs to get a nice workout. If it's just some jumping jacks, like I've said before in my other video, I need to be moving. Um, just being stagnant on a regular basis is just not it for your girl over here. So when we moved to Turkey, <sighs> we didn't have a scale, but I saw and I felt the way my clothes felt. And within a month or two, I lost 20 pounds. So I knew that my body was acting up. Um, my body truly responds in a way, I'm so glad, thank you Jesus, that I can truly regulate when I, that's why I always say we have to be aware, be awake, pay attention to your body, pay attention to what it's going through, pay attention to how it reacts to environments, foods, exercise, non-exercise, rest, not getting rest, stress, pay attention. Uh, but <laughs> I know I was unconsciously stressed and I think I was trying so hard not to be stressed that it was just a big move. So um, I had never lived out the country before. We were moving our children. I talked about this before and um, I lost 20 pounds. So my husband, <laughs> my wonderful husband, he entreated me and he was like, Faith, please go to the doctor. Now, um, I usually say practitioners. I really do think that people practice because if I go to a doctor and they can't give me any information on nutrition, diet, rest, but all they wanna do is pop me with pills or remove my thyroid, and I've talked about this before, then it's hard for me to uh, <laughs> trust or believe what they say. Um, so I've had numerous experiences with doctors. I've talked about this before too, and I, it just hasn't been good, you guys. I would rather stay at home than have and, and figure it out and just pray <laughs> than, you know, and I really have to pray for the practitioners and whoever it is that I go to see because I just have an issue with trusting what they say. I just haven't been steered the right way, especially, again, when they don't give me any di direction on nutrition, rest, exercise how is none of that a factor getting outdoor that all that is factor you guys <laughs> food water um sunlight fresh air trees seeing fresh water all these kinds of things have effects on us and if we're not around this kind of stuff um, lock somebody in a room all day that's gonna jack them up just pump them up with medicine all the time i just i just can't see but anyway <laughs> i don't want to keep going on rants my husband entreated me and he was like, hey, please go to the doctor. So I found this practitioner and um, so anyway, I went to the doctor and the first thing she said to me was, your heart, your heart rate is so high. And I was like, well, what is it? <laughs> you know, and she was like, he didn't know what she was talking about. I don't know what kind of system she had, but I can feel when my heartbeat is off the Richter scale. Um, and she might have had it right, you guys, but I didn't feel like that. And when I've had heart palpitations and when I had like the super racy heart, I, and it, the highest mine got was like 135-ish, one, and that is extremely high to me. Um, but I knew what it felt like, and I know what that feels like. It doesn't feel good at all, and I didn't feel like that. But I do know that I, it was a higher rate. So she was like, well, relax. And I was like, well, anytime anybody goes to the doctor's office, <laughs> your heart is gonna race. Like, I think it is, a, it's a white coat situation. Look like at the white coats, here come the white coats. I think it, I think there's some type of anxiety that, for certain people like me that comes automatically when you're going to see the white coats. So anyway, 
I went to the doctor and she was like, well, can we schedule you for surgery? Girl, you just met me. What do you mean? Can you schedule me for surgery? So she wanted to remove my thyroid, of course, which is every single practitioner, it seems like. I was like, you're not going to get me to just get surgery just off a of GP. It's not happening. So, so she was like, well, can I get you to take the medication? So you guys, I did it. I caved in. Um, I took the medication. So, and these are ones for the heart and the other one is just for the thyroid altogether. So I took it for two months, guys. This is the part. <laughs> I started taking it and um, of course I'm paying attention because I've always known these two medications together. When I have tried to take it, take them, it causes constipation, it causes headaches. Sure enough, and I'm getting older. It's not like I'm in my 20s, I'm not even in my 30s. As I get older, I feel like the effects are a little bit stronger. So <laughs> I took the medication for two months, I paid attention. And sure enough, the headaches, especially around my period time, when it's time for that menstrual, those headaches came like a, oh my gosh. It was like, I couldn't move, painful. And when it's my menstrual, just normal faith, nothing. I don't have cramps, I don't have headaches, I don't have constipation. Of course the constipation came. And it was like a huge, like, terrible pain on my right side when I had to poop. I'm just trying to give you guys all the details. And I'm like, what is this? And I'm paying attention because I'm trying to pay attention to my body. What has changed me taking medication? I don't have these. And it was the same thing. I'll go back to that story in 2019 when I was basically on a fast for a whole entire month. And I was so constipated when I finally pooped. Like I would run to the bathroom. I had never experienced constipation in my life um up until like i was 40 years old and that was when i took that medication when i finally pooped the log was like this big that came out of me and thank god maybe he was removing some things and that's why that it was like a forced fast that i didn't eat for that month but anyway i had this pain this year uh because it was early 2023 without i took the medication i went to the doctor probably in january and she gave me the medication but um <laughs> they gave me this and another side effect, crazy, my hair. You know, usually when you deal with hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease, we talk about our hair shedding. I really started to pay attention to that. And so I'm doing like the black tea rinse on my hair so my, head, my hair stops shedding. And I'm just like, why the heck is my hair shedding so much right now? The medication. And so I'm telling my husband, I was like, I'm not taking that medication anymore. Like I, I really just have to calm down. I'll take my vitamins and minerals and pay attention to what I'm putting in my body and I'm gonna up working out. So Isaac, he became my account accountability partner. We started doing Juice and Toya, my girl Heather Robinson, like indoor workouts. Um, we would go do bike rides around, there, there's a lake down here and we would walk the park, we'd play tennis. <laughs> we would just do all kinds of stuff. And literally, you guys, that regulated it for me. But I stopped taking the medication because I was like, I don't want my hair to fall out. I don't want to be having these crazy headaches, migraines, and I don't want to be constipated. And to me, literally, that is worse than the actual symptoms from hyperthyroidism, Graves' disease. Um, and it's only every so often. Now, I know people talk about a thyroid storm. I'm not sure if I dealt with that. I do have a high tolerance for pain. I had all three of my babies natural. So um, I think that my tolerance is a little bit higher and maybe my will is very strong in dealing with things. And um, I just continue to pray and God has been absolutely wonderful and his grace is sufficient I just have to make sure that I am literally uh, in him because he is the one that makes me aware and makes me pay attention to what's going on around me my environment what I'm doing if I'm getting movement or not um, especially as I get older it's just not a game to be playing around with uh, the different things <laughs> with hyperthyroid it's just like gosh but anyway that's my story I did take the medication for about two months and then I tapped out you guys it just it just doesn't work for me I try my hardest <laughs> um, and I do feel like the medication does do a balance I do it kind of regulated um, the heart rate at that time so um, yeah y'all pray for me <laughs> but there's another scripture I want to share with you guys too because you know let's see I have first no, 2 Corinthians, 
I told you guys, God's grace is sufficient. Remember Paul, Paul had that thorn in his side. Apostle Paul, I always talk about Apostle Paul. And I mentioned this before in my other hypothyroid video where he just had a, it kept, it kept him humble and the Lord didn't take it away. He asked the Lord three times, can you take it away? Can you take it away? Can you take it away? And the Lord didn't take it away, but it did um, keep him humble. And it makes it, us, us understand that God's grace is sufficient. And it's not that we'll always feel terrible or we'll feel robbed, but sometimes we just deal with things and we just have to be aware and acknowledge God in all our ways. There's another scripture too, though, that's in Proverbs chapter four. And the Lord says, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health unto all their flesh. So God's word is life and it is health to us. So I lean on that. That's part of his grace being sufficient for who we are and being able to get through any of the struggles when it comes to any um, element that hits our bodies. So I've been good otherwise. <laughs> so this was, was, I'm back at December, so it's been a year um, that I started taking the medication. I stopped taking the medication within this year, 2023, because January is when I began and then I had to stop because no, not January. I don't think I went to the doctor until February or March. January. No, it might have been around the end of January. Probably the end of January. So like February or March, I was taking that medication pretty faithfully. Probably a little bit of April too. But it just, I tell you guys, that hair falling out and those headaches <laughs> and the pain and the constipation, I just... I don't know, I would love to hear from you guys. Like, when you take the medication, do you have any side effects? Does it bother you the least bit? Um, another one too, I, was, I, I get itchy. It's so interesting. Um, I don't know if you guys pay attention or if you just feel better when if you've taken it, but for me personally, uh, like I said, high uh, activity uh, movement, literally regulates so much for me and I know it sounds weird that because uh, when you have those symptoms those crazy symptoms um, sometimes we're weak we don't have strength and um, the heart rate and all that kind of stuff it, it just feels like how are you working out but I, I, I push through and our diet too I think um, pay attention to your diet I do eat different now living in Turkey like in the US I barely touch chicken I was not buying chicken to make no chicken, but here I buy chicken. It's not, it doesn't taste like or affect my body the way it did when I lived in the States. So that's different. Same like I've, I've told people dairy and all that kind of stuff is different here. So, and then there's a lot of home cooking going on here. So you guys know I like to make my own home stuff and I love to bake and that's another thing. Like I know white sugar is terrible and processed food is the worst for us. Um, snacking on that kind of stuff, like get, get some live food in your, your body. So I think that's the balance for me is we eat a lot of live food, but I do bake. I do bake with white sugar. I know that question has been asked me. Hey, if you were saying stay away from white sugar, I do say that, I do. But I do know and believe that when you make your homemade stuff as opposed to buying the packaged stuff, I think it's a hundred times better. So, um, and it doesn't affect me the way that, now there is a balance. I can't have it 24 eight, but I do have a family here that I can't cook for and bake for. So, um, but it doesn't mean that I'm eating the whole cake guys, <laughs> you know, or the whole cheesecake or pie or whatever I'm making. You know, there's a family that I have here and um, they indulge and they get to have that too. So I think it's a balance. I totally think it's a balance. But other than that, again, I'll say it over and over again. God's grace is sufficient. He's so, wonderful in our weakness he is made strong and i can totally glory in the infirmity because he holds me and takes care of me and i'll just stand on that in the name of jesus christ but i hope you guys are doing well maybe i'll share some of the other things that i do because i do juice especially in the season usually around this season i feel like this is when hyperthyroid is the worst for me because i in here in ankara uh, turkey ankara turkey it's so cold but i have managed to continue to get outside outdoors and 
take walks, run the stairs. I put out a video out about that. I still work out. That kind of stuff helps me tremendously, you guys. I thank God for that. So I hope you guys are doing all right. Maybe we could do a live one day. You know, hopefully we can do a live and we could talk about this thing together. Any questions that you guys may have, and maybe some questions that I have so we can just talk to each other. Cause I know, and I thank you guys for the platform. I thank you guys for talking to one another under uh, in the comments because y'all be helping each other out and I think it's good for all of us to continue to communicate because God has given us you know a community to fellowship with and you know be whole and be healed just because there is an infirmity it doesn't mean that you're not whole <laughs> and healed because I feel good and uh, bless the Lord for that anyway this is Faith's oven this is your girl Faith <laughs> and I'll just continue to say God is good trust him believe him and if you don't have time to read God's word I think we can make time and I think you should listen to it because it says that it's life and health to the flesh so Proverbs chapter 4 verses 20 through 22 God bless y'all and I hope you guys are doing all right